Very good afternoon, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Barbara, and you are tuning in today to Malacca Manipal Medical College's webinar series for specializations in the field of medicine and dentistry, where today we will be talking to our panelists in the field of pediatric dentistry and conservative dentistry and endodontics. Joining us today are two of our professors from Malacca Manipal Medical College, Professor Dr. Eswarya Uma, who is the head of department for pediatric dentistry, and Professor Dr. Alup Mishra, our clinical professor from the Department of Conservative Dentistry and Endodontics. They will be sharing with us their journey uh, from being a student uh, back in their days, their specialization journey, and what exactly do they do in their day-to-day -day functions for these various of <laughs> specialization. Good afternoon, Professor Uma and Professor Alup. Hi, good afternoon, Barbara. It's nice Hi. to be here today. Thank you. Dr. Alok, are you there? Yeah, uh, hi, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, thank you for joining us. And uh, before we start, I'd just like to share a bit of your background with everybody tuning in. And we'll start with uh, Professor Dr. Eswarya Uma, who gained her BDS from the Government Dental College in Hyderabad, India. She also did a master's in pedodontics and preventive dentistry and she holds a fellowship from the Foundation in Advance of International Medical Education and Research, Pharma. Currently, as I mentioned, she is our head of department and in her career, which spans over 20 years now, ladies and gentlemen, we encourage you to put, um, respect the lady's privacy. Don't do the math, right? Don't do the math to guess the age. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> but she's been working as a pediatric dentist um, she's been involved in undergraduate as well as postgraduate teaching, uh, and she's been a guide to many postgraduate students. She's got extensive clinical experience across India and the UAE in hospital-based dentistry for infants and children, particularly for children with special health care needs. And joining her is Professor Dr. Alok Mishra, who is a dental graduate from King George's Medical University, one of India's um, most prestigious university, I must say, Dr. Alok. And he holds also his master's in the field of conservative dentistry and endodontics from King George's. He's currently a clinical professor in the Department of Conservative Dentistry and Endodontics. Um, he's taught in many places um, and he has over 25 years experience as a clinician and academic in his field of specialty. So, um, profs, you know, it's, it's, dentistry is not really a profession where you hear many dentists talk about specialization. I mean, uh, to be fair, we, we, we go and see a dentist most of the time when we are in great pain because our teeth and, and the, the oral um, orifice is often the most neglected part of the entire body, right? Mm -hmm. So to, to talk about specialization, um, and, you know, for a lot of our viewers today, it is something that we, we want to inspire you to look towards. Whether you are considering a career in dentistry, you are already studying your BDS or you've completed your BDS. Because at the end of the day, um, people don't just come to a dentist for things like a toothache, uh, you know, a, a filling coming out, uh, scaling needed. Uh, even a simple toothache has got many underlying reasons or contributing reasons as to why your tooth is hurting. So we, are, we, we would like to go into that today. And, you know, to start off, maybe um, we're going to ask our panelists to share with us a, a brief area of their specialization. And we would like to start with uh, Prof. Uma, you know, tell us a bit about pediatric and preventive dentistry. Okay, hi everyone. Uh, I would like to give you a, a brief uh, uh, brief about the what we do in pediatric and preventive dentistry. Uh, basically, we uh, we do dentistry for children, and we see uh, a babies, we see preschool children, and we see children through their childhood into their adolescence. And now it is a uh, it's very nice because. Um, uh, we see children growing up and they become our best friends for life and along with them we also have their families and extended families who become our friends and they are patients for our life. 
and uh, not to forget we also treat a lot of uh, special uh, children with special health care needs um, and again uh, there are some of these children who develop bonds with us and here i would like to give some instances which have happened in our own institution um, uh, when i first joined here we had a baby who came a child who came to us when she was two when i just joined in 2013 and till today that kid comes when she came she was a baby now she is almost eight and a half she's going to be nine soon and she comes when she came as a baby of course she was frightened but now she's such a confident kid and she comes and from the corridor she calls for me dr uma and she calls and comes running and along with her her whole extended family all her cousins are patients who have been treated by our students now this is this is an ongoing and still uh, they keep coming for regular checkups and things like that and on the other hand our students have also treated the children with special health care needs and here uh, we allow our students to treat children with special health care needs of course we supervise the treatment we are there and it is so nice to see some of these children with special health care needs have formed a bond with our students wow. and once the students graduate and they still keep coming back to us and we do the follow up and those kids look for their favorite dentist mm. and they like i want only that particular doctor and we say i'm so sorry he has graduated now this is the new doctor who will see and they move on and they make fun, a very nice bond and it's very nice it's very satisfying in that way and of course we don't we don't only focus on just doing the treatment we focus a lot on prevention right which yeah. is the core of dentistry so we start at the time when when they start coming to us as babies and we continue the prevention part through as they grow into adolescence and into young adulthood so and then we pass them on to dr alok's department that's in the <laughs> so yeah that's about what we do in pediatric dentistry okay excellent now dr alok conservative dentistry um you know th- this is this is very interesting because i remember as as a child every time there was a tooth ache going to the dentist mean pulling the teeth out but it's not the case anymore today raso aplom chair hello yeah am i, am I audible yes, am i audible yes, to you are. yes you are okay first of all let me say selamat datang semua ni hao everyone and let me tell you about my specialty which is conservative dentistry and endodontics and what essentially we do we actually take away your dental pain most of the time the patients who come to us they are the patients which are in severe pain or they are the patients who are uh in the need of some functional replacement replacement of some filling or something has come out or something has broken in the dentition or simply they need aesthetic enhancement of their smile so they are not very happy with their smile so they want some solution so they come to our department and we try to give the best of the treatment and services that we can a uh, couple with that comes the responsibility of giving them a proper consultation and what all can be done to them because you know these days there are so many resources which the patient has has consult before coming in then there are here say the things the words that they hear from their peers from their friends from their family who have received some treatment somewhere so uh, they are kind of you can say they have uh, not fully formed but some rough opinion about the dentistry as a as a treatment option and our department mm. i'm not very sure if if people do know us as a separate specialty conservative dentistry and endodontics but uh, I- can assure you that major parts major parts of the day to day complaints that you hear they are being dealt in my department so our responsibility is quite high 
and like dr uma has said that in her department they uh, greet a child and the child becomes the friend for life almost same thing happens in our department also we don't receive the child as such but we receive an adult who is mm. crying yeah. or el- or almost at the verge of crying or hasn't slept for last two three days and when you treat them uh, they cry again and this time they cry again because of the happiness that they have yeah so yeah uh, pain's gone <laughs> so uh, uh, we we almost always tell them that uh, you are in the right place and today you are going to leave your pain right here and it not going most of them we uh, are able to their expectations and our words mm. uh, yeah yeah so, so that's so, that's a little brief right now one one of one of the i mean one of the reasons why we we are starting our dentistry um webinar series with these two areas um which is pediatric dentistry as well as conservative dentistry and endodontics is because i think the general public's perception is that uh this is the bread and butter you know that this is the reasons why whether as a child or as an, as an adult we we go to a dentist is because we've got pain um so you know it it's interesting to note that it's actually a area of specialization you know um and and as opposed to what the general public thinks anyone with a dentistry degree can actually do all these things so moving on i'd like to know um how did both of you decide on your speciality uh professor uma when you talk about kids uh or, or being in the field of pediatrics whether it's medicine or dentistry one of the questions that comes to mind is do i have to like children Um so how did you decide on your speciality? Okay um so just like uh, uh, many of the view uh, the audience here today they are at crossroads should i join or not like that uh, once you completed dentistry you have uh, a big picture as to what all dentistry entails what are the different such specialties which are there and you have a rough idea what interests you uh, what Uh, you know uh, gets you uh, you know makes you really uh, uh, excited about the stuff uh, so what happens is um, so then after you finish your uh, undergrad you come to a crossroads like okay i am interested in so many uh, fields now which one do i take um now uh, as you see i've graduated from india in india our system is that we have to write an entrance exam to get into a masters uh, degree uh, so uh, before i did my masters i had uh, done a residency in pediatric dentistry so i had a rough idea as to what pediatric dentistry is about and so that was one of my options but at the same time i was also interested on in couple of other specialties as well but then i still had to write the entrance and the place where i did the residency at at that point there were there was only one seat which was open for uh, uh which was open for admission so and the chances of getting in were were almost remote so i was not sure whether i would get it or not and that's why i said serendipity because i wrote the entrance and uh, i actually i didn't even fill up the form because i thought it's only one seat what are the chances of even getting it and then my friend said okay no you must fill up the form and i filled up the form i wrote the exam and i got the seat and uh, i got the subject and i had an idea i was prepared for it and i got it and it has in it it has led me into a beneficial and a happy way that's why i said serendipity because i i got something which i was kind of interested but was not sure but i got it and over a period of time i developed liking towards it and i uh, developed my skills and i i feel that this is something which i really enjoy i and i don't think i would have enjoyed anything else because i love working with kids now excellent excellent What about you Dr Anuk how, how did you decide that you wanted to help people preserve what they have and and maintain the use of their natural god given teeth for as long as they possibly could
Dr. Alok? Yeah, Barbara. Yeah. Could you could you share now how how did you decide that you wanted to go into this particular area of speciality? Yeah, my story. I was just thinking what to say. Actually, <laughs> uh, this <laughs> this college is quite old, and this is in my city. So yeah, King George. Almost yeah, almost everyone in my family has gotten their degree from the college so i had a lot more to compete with mm. my uncle my cousins everyone passed from that that wow. same university and even my my uncle remained the head of the department ent mm. my cousin was the head of the department pediatric uh, surgery so all those challenges were there and with that comes the uh, another challenge that I have to pursue dentistry. Rest everyone is a medical doctor. Right. So uh, <laughs> the first thing in our times was that the dentistry is the younger brother. Mm. So I was a I was a little bit discouraged at that time when I right. got selected. But then I somehow pursued and I found it very interesting. Mm. One of my cousins already in dentistry and he told me that uh, don't get discouraged by what people are saying you are in the right place at the right time right. just keep pursuing what you are doing so then finally you got the degree and then comes that time to decide which branch you want to pursue your post graduation in so at that time like dr uma said in india we have uh, a post graduate entrance examination so I also entered the examination and uh, fortunately I got good marks so I got top merit and I had everything at hand means any branch I could have chosen and I had a particular leaning towards oral surgery and orthodontics mm. because those were the those were the branches where I had got the highest marks and gold medal and what not okay. so <laughs> Naturally, my tendency was to go towards the branches where I have already proven myself, so I will enjoy more. That was my initial perspective. Mm -hmm. But uh, suddenly, it just dawned upon me that let me uh, let me prove myself in the branch where I got the lowest score. Right. And yes, I am dis I am disclosing this. Uh, during my BDS days, I got the lowest score overall in my conservative dentistry and endodontics. Oh, so okay. I took it, <laughs> I took it rather hard on my psych, and I said, "Okay, let me prove myself in this branch and become a specialist in this branch." And then, uh, since I have gone through those difficult times, those difficult periods, where I know where the bottlenecks are. So right. I, I might be the right resource for straightening those kinks and making things easier for my own students. Mm. And, 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 and why not? Give it a try. You mm. might have scored less, but you can always improve. Mm. So, dis so despite everybody telling me that uh, you could have joined oral surgery, and you could have joined orthodontics. I still joined conservative dentistry, and, and today I am very proud of my decision. And I don't know, my my students are better judges to tell me if I have been able to clarify things to them and to make their lives easier a bit, because mm -hmm. in my specialty is very uh, what you call is study intensive. So right. many things. To, to read and so many procedures to perform, so people easily get scared. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so um, yeah, that 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 kind of thing is there. But uh, what I have learned all through this, and 25 years have passed, and I am just going to celebrate my 50th birthday on this coming Tuesday. Wow! So, <laughs> so, so uh, with all that experience in my head, I still think that I'm still learning and learning at a daily basis from my own students. 
mm-hmm. things are still developing and mm-hmm. let me tell you the learning is not stopping at any stage and passing on those passing on those learning experiences to my colleagues and to my students i think that's the best thing i have gotten from my specialty excellent excellent very very inspiring and and you know you you both mentioned briefly that um you know you you had to do a a postgraduate exam and things like that um but could you you know dr uma could you talk a bit about the actual specialist training itself i mean you you got that one seat that was available um what was it like okay um uh, so when you move on to your specialization then the specialization training is uh, pretty intense and it's pretty vigorous uh, and uh you are on your toes all the time because you have a lot of clinical work to do and you have a lot of academic work to do and you have research to do so you always wish there were uh, 30 hours in a day because the time is never enough and then you are on call and you are called in different directions and it's it's pretty challenging and it is quite intense having said that uh, during the specialization course since we are in the pediatric dentistry we we are exposed to a whole lot of procedures which we are supposed to do as a specialist and uh, also including procedures for children in the ot in under general anesthesia sorry under general anesthesia in the uh, operation theater so we have to go there we have to undergo a lot of training on that as to what are the ot procedures and uh, it is quite uh, vigorous so you have to schedule uh, so it's uh, um like you have to be on it all the time so therefore it has its highs when you do when when your patient the work which you want to do goes the way you plan it and comes out it is it gives a nice you really feel excited and thrilled about it but of course there are points when you feel really low because uh, you feel uh, at on as on one side you have your mentors who are really pushing you because you, you can't do it you are pushed to your limit and uh, there are some times when you feel oh my god i'm not i just cannot do it anymore but at the same time the same mentors are so supportive and they really are by your side and say no you can do it and you you just don't worry you just do it go on you're doing a great job they are, they keep they are uh, you know they are your um uh, they are your firm support during that time and now if i look back yes every minute of it was worth it was quite challenging but yes it it really trained me and i know uh, i don't think i left out anything and it is really uh, very useful to me uh, right now um, and in all my uh, clinical work as well as in uh, in it helps me the experience which i underwent and the experience which i have gained it helps me in passing it on to our students you know sharing with them what all we do and stuff like that so yeah it's it's Excellent. yeah it's and i and i suppose you know with a lot of your patients being children uh, they just just looking at their innocent faces and and knowing that you could do something to improve their quality of life would that would be an additional driver wouldn't it yes of course I, the thing is like most of the people they say oh my god you treat children oh that must be so difficult that's the first thing everybody says to me and i tell them believe me treating children is way easier than treating adults <laughs> because for when I, i i in fact in my lectures i tell uh, because the students also say ma'am the children how do we handle them so i say listen handling children is very easy because the child when he comes to you he asks me only one question and that is are you going to hurt me and the answer i give to the child the way i answer the child and put the child at ease and take care of his fears makes the job so easy the child develops trust me and lets me do anything after that so uh, so yes and each child is different and the same child is different on different days so it's quite challenging and quite interesting i know two children are alike what works yeah. for one does ne- it never works for another child so it's a, you have to reinvent yourself every time with every child so that way it's quite interesting 
and i i really get very excited when you know something which i want to try something and uh, uh, a different kind of approach to the child and modify my usual approaches to a, a different child and it works and i'm like yes this worked it, it didn't work in the previous child so it's yeah quite interesting that way yeah excellent excellent and dr alok yeah barbara yeah so you know i i suppose you in, in some sense in your field because you deal with adults um, even as adults we are afraid of pain and and, and most of uh, the procedures that you do yeah in your specialization um you know we 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 come to you because we're in pain and we are we we look at the equipment and we wonder is it going to cause us more pain um did you have a lot of a lot of those uh types of patients to overcome when you were doing your specialization and what was your specialization journey like uh here again i am taking a cue from profuma uh my patients are the same kids which have grown up into adults mm-hmm. so uh <laughs> they just grow body wise maturity is an option <laughs> so uh the fears also grow exponentially yeah so uh, but fortunately we have some very good people who have handled them during their childhood so yeah. our work is a little bit uh less and 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 uh, but let me say that i am not over promising that we are completely painless and don't be afraid of us and don't be don't be scared of us uh, i can't say that because th- uh, see the things appear quite scary and in the words of agatha christie if i may quote her uh, she has quoted dental chair as the most 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 scary place on the earth because you are sitting in a compromised position a light is being shown on your face and you can't see where we are working and you are already in pain so and if even if you are an adult you start thinking like a kid and you want to throw a big tantrum just like a kid but kids have the opportunity to actually throw the tantrum adults don't have that so they throw something else <laughs> they start <laughs> they start talking and they try to deviate and they try to dodge and they try to make it very sure right in the beginning that there will not be any pain and believe me the professions who are supposed to be very courageous professions like police people and army people when they sit in the dental chair they are the most afraid species i have seen i have i have treated actually uh it is i am not i am not saying anything against anyone but that shows that even if you are mentally conditioned to take harsh things when it comes on to your own pain your own body and particularly something where you cannot see yeah. inside your mouth so the pain gets amplified because of psychological uh, issues so uh, here comes the soft skills part where as an endodontist i have to tell them that see you are already in pain so if even if i leave you at this point the things are not going to improve even if i give you a medicine the thing might recur back because we need to do some procedure to relieve you for good for a long time mm-hmm. so in that case you have to understand that you have to let me work on your body but believe me while working on your body i will consider your body as my own body mm-hmm. so i won't do anything which is going to give pain to my own self so in most of the conditions most of the patients do accept this that the dentist is not over promising the specialist is not, not over promising and they are saying something uh, possible and let's give it a try we yeah. do do we the normal tendency the natural tendency is to rush into things and to relieve everything sooner to gain the confidence of the patient and that's where the problems happen mm-hmm. when we rush into things we don't we don't actually gain any confidence 
we actually lose it ultimately. So yeah. the the trick lies in giving enough audience to the patient. See, the person who is sitting on my chair, he is already in pain. So he wants to tell his part of the story. If you don't give him a good audience, that person is never going to believe in whatever you are going to do. This holds true with the kids and with the adults in the same way. Adults have the opportunity that they have the authority of the age. So we have to deal with the authority as well. Like Prof. Uma has to deal with tantrum. We have to deal with the authority that comes with the age. Oftentimes, some uh, uh, older patients, they come and they give us many citations that they have uh, received a treatment there and whatnot, and it was not painful, and it was not like this, and it was not like this, and, and, and they, they had a very different kind of an experience. Mm -hmm. So we have to go through that, and we have to resolve those issues as well. So adults have the same kind of things. Regarding the uh, my training, I would say that, that uh, it uh, it felt means I should I I am not I am not trying to blame my teachers. I am very respectful of, for them. But my training was like an army boot camp, which I have written also. Uh, the and now I now now I really appreciate their their efforts to make it an army boot camp because we we have to work in a very tight atmosphere one mm -hmm. small mistake might mean uh, complete so probably the teachers or the trainers whatever we call them they had that thing in mind so they never ever compromised on the detail side on the type of uh, the kind of time we are uh, Dedicating to the patient, everything was monitored like hell, and we were asked so many questions that I still get goosebumps. Just about it. <laughs> remembering my postgraduate days, right. and uh, uh, my, since I did from a government university, the government university, the teachers are they don't really listen to uh, the. Uh, the soft pleas and all those things. They say, no, 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 you are here and you are going to become a specialist and you will be training people. So if you don't know the procedure, what are you going to teach and train? So they they are, they they really trained us very rigorously. And today, uh, at this age, at this young age, I am, I am really thankful to all my teachers and really thankful to whatever they did. And that is helping me every day, every second, every minute that I spend with my patients and my students here at Malacca Manipal. Excellent, excellent. Now we're going to go into the next area, which is what are the pros and cons of your area? Okay, and um, we'll, we'll start with um, the, the pros. What are the good side to your area of specialization? Uh, Prof Uma, would you like to start first? Okay, um, since we deal with children, uh, so what happens is, um, and I do, I do everything for children, all the dental treatment needs of children. So that means I do endodontics, like Dr. Uh, what Dr. Alok's department does. We do endodontics for children. We do fillings for children. We do minor surgeries for children. We give them, if they have knocked out a tooth or something, we replace the, like we call, what, what we call as prosthesis. So we give them prosthesis. And of course, we see a lot of children uh, where, we see, uh, where we see that they are developing um, um, malocclusion. That means they are, we see a tendency and we see that the teeth are coming a little crooked. So we are the first ones to go in and intervene it from becoming a full-blown malocclusion, totally malaligned teeth and all that. And we see a lot of children here and we correct it. So that means in, in one speciality, we get to do a whole lot of things pertaining to children and we anticipate what can happen in future and we try to rectify, we educate the parents about it and therefore uh, try to minimize the effects of a poor oral hygiene at a, uh, as the child grows. So if you're looking at clinical practice, so if, if I'm in a private practice, so how, what does it mean? 
So what it means is my practice goes grows by leaps and bounds. How? Because when I'm, I I keep telling my children, uh, my students as well the same thing. So when I treat the child, uh, the parent is my patient is the child, but the parent is the observer, and the parent is keenly watching as how as to how I'm treating their child, who's the most precious thing for them in their life. So right. if I handle their child in in a way which is which is uh, uh, which is acceptable to them and they appreciate it. And next thing I see is I have seen many parents coming to me and saying, "Can you please treat me?" And yeah. next thing is they go and talk to their family, immediate family, and say, "You please go to such and such doctor or such and such institute, Manipal." And you please, we have a lot of patients coming in like that. Yeah. Okay, so you please go to Manipal. They treat the children so well, and then afterwards, and then it goes to the extended family. So basically, when if you're doing private practice, it is really it helps in your practice uh, growth. The growth, the the practice really grows. It helps a lot. So that that is that is the pros I see. So uh, today I can do a whole lot of procedures in children, and uh, yes, of course, if at some point I do get uh, if I have a little doubt, I always consult my other colleagues from other departments. Say, hey, this is what is there. So, what do you think? How can we do it? And a lot of times we do interspeciality work as well. So, a lot of things happen like that. So, those are the pros for us. Okay. And Dr. Alok, what about you? What's what's the good side about your speciality? I think every side is a good side in my speciality. I <laughs> haven't seen any bad side in my speciality. Uh, my speciality, I am uh, apart from the pain. We also deal with aesthetics, the looks, and people these days are becoming more and more aware about their looks, about how their smile uh, is, and can we do anything to improve their smile and improve uh, the way they look? Uh, because that boosts their confidence and. Uh, in many of the professions these days, the smile and looks, they matter a lot. So uh, people in public relations and people who are even in business, they do uh, come and ask for smile enhancement, aesthetic improvement, all those things. So that is one area, that, that is one major area that is there. And uh, there are so many different means and ways to do it. We have uh, interspeciality uh, cooperations also from specialities like prosthodontics to achieve the best possible results. We have uh, cooperation from specialities like periodontics in achieving the ideal aesthetics of the smile and maintenance uh, and and the maintenance of it. And obviously. Uh, not only limited to these, there are surgical procedures as well, but uh, we have to carry out the surgical procedures in the dedicated department of oral surgery. The surgeries are related to the endodontic part, and uh, sometimes the patient desperately wants to save the tooth, and the only alternative is to do a surgical intervention. So we go and do that. Some of the restorations are like a carryover restorations and carryover procedures like uh, 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 patients referred from Prof. Uma's department who have grown past or who have some uh, procedure which needs to be completed in our department, there we do it. Then there are uh, procedures which uh, we cooperate with specialties like prosto, uh, prosthodontics where uh, part of the procedure is done in our speciality and the other part is done in prosthodontics, but we share the responsibility and we watch over the whole procedure until it is done to the satisfaction. Mm -hmm. And then comes the uh, maintenance part, the review part, the education part, the uh, educating the patient about how to take care of their smile and the function and the how to enjoy their dentition. That's mm -hmm. that's one thing. and. And the, first, uh, and the foremost thing is these days a lot more spurious procedures are in vogue uh, where uh, false teeth and whatnot, some some uh, makeover smile and, and 
some 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 self proclaimed things are there so we have to we don't go and deny anything but the patient himself comes to us with the experience to speak volumes about what they have undergone yeah. so that's the time where you have to rejuvenate the patient and recreate and reestablish their uh, belief in the dentistry the art of dentistry and and we have to tell them that see it failed because it was not done in a proper way and uh, you wanted it to be done so fast and you you cut corners and you 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 just tried to take a shortcut so you landed up in this kind of a trouble but it can still be straightened it might take a little bit more time a little bit more effort and of course a little bit more money but mm-hmm. if you keep patience and you be on our side we can promise you that we can straighten things out so mm-hmm. that's a very satisfying thing i would say when the patient comes to you in pain or completely dissatisfied by the looks or by the function and you are able to restore everything back to the normal or even better so that sets an example uh, not only for the patient but for their family and for our students mm-hmm. our students also who follow our examples right they watch us they, they see what how how we are talking and how we are dealing so those things they go a long way so i yeah. think think mostly the uh, we have pros only <laughs> <laughs> now you know uh, um you we 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 we've talked a lot about both sides and um you know you that there are many similarities that you've both jointly pointed out yeah um in terms of the procedures and stuff like that um but of course the 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 key difference is the the life stage whether it's a child or an adult but as as dr aluk uh, pointed out uh, when it comes to toothache um an adult would also be thinking and behaving like a child um i i should know this i was your patient last year uh, needing a root canal having left my tooth with a gaping hole for 2 years um i i think you know in, in deciding whether you want to treat an adult or a child uh, as a dentist um would you think in your opinion that having a love for children would play a role whether to go and and choose a, a specialization dealing with adults or a specialization dealing with uh, children um professors what do you think do do you know would 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 having a love for children sway your decision towards pediatric dentistry i don't think so it's got nothing um basically uh, what you need is patience mm-hmm. if you are uh, i feel if you don't have patience then um you will have challenge treating children because mm-hmm. all the child is doing is trying to uh, the child tests you how far just like a child tests his patience how far can i push my parents before they uh, they get really firm with me it's the same thing the child tries in the clinic so it takes a bit of patience on our part uh, and uh, in our clinics i have seen most of the students i think they handle children way better than i do so mm-hmm. i do, i think we all and most of the time when the kids come i all i hear in the clinics when the kids come is oh they're so cute oh <laughs> and all that and next thing i know i only hear baby chatter in the clinic so i think inherently we we have an affinity towards children it's just that we are scared what i do see among our children is they have a little bit of fear what will i do if the child starts crying and yeah. once we train them we see we teach them psychology like this is how a chi- this is why a child behaves the way he's behaving because that is the most important once you understand why a child is behaving the way he's behaving things become way easier and the, most of the students once they understand and they are absolutely fine so i don't think uh, having an affinity like oh i don't like kids i don't think it's that it's more about patience children do test your patience no matter what now so dr. that's what... dr aluk i have a different question for you 
in, in, yeah, sure. in your entire you know 20 odd years of practice have you ever looked at an adult uh, state of their teeth and go uh, you know and be very upset with the adults um, you know or, or young adult the their pediatric dentist you know did you did you have you ever looked at someone's tooth and go like my God, why didn't the dentist treating you as a child do a better job? <laughs> uh, 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 that would be actually putting the blame to the colleague that I never do, actually. Because the possibility is that the person whom I am seeing on my chair might never have gotten to uh, a right person or might never have been directed to a right person. Let me give you a very ex small example. Yeah. All of us, we, we go and uh, we are given uh, uh, the vaccine shots when we are young babies. Yeah. So the parents also know that the baby has to be given a BCD shot and a polio drops and all these things. And yeah. where they have to go, they know. But I have yet to see parents who bring their child when they cut their first teeth to a dentist to ask for what type of brush should my kid use and how do I train my kid for oral hygiene. So you see the, the, the mindset, the thought process. Mm. They, the, 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 it's, 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 it's not the problem with the uh, periodontist or with the general dentist or with any other specialist is the mm. problem with how much aware you are. Right. Fortunately, the efforts done by the current pediatric dentistry people and the community dentistry people, they are working well and people are becoming aware and the students are also training them well and they are uh, telling like in, uh, in our uh, faculty of dentistry, when the treatment starts, we tell the patient about the oral hygiene. The first and foremost thing after the diagnosis is telling the patient about the oral hygiene, wherever, whatever point, whatever clinic you are coming to, the oral hygiene instructions will be given to you. And whenever I see the patient, I don't just concentrate on the complaint that they are making uh, related to my specialty. I examine the patient as a, as a whole. Because it's a holistic approach. So we yeah. we see the patient. We don't just believe in uh, putting the blame on someone else for not doing the job. If mm -hmm. someone else escaped it or they were in, in uh, some hurry or the patient didn't allow or the patient didn't accept, it happens most of the time. So uh, the, the best way out is not to blame, but to mm -hmm. do the thing. Be proactive. Yeah. If you are in, you are in your profession as a PDS level, like I'm a I'm an endodontist, I'm a specialist in endo. But my basic training is for every branch of dentistry, so I still retain my capacity for those branches. So why can't I just do the job right away? And 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 rather than blaming someone else, I should tell the patient, let's see, this thing could have been better had you seen. Uh, a dentist when you were uh, younger and mm -hmm. you wouldn't need, you wouldn't need me and you wouldn't need to spend so much money and you wouldn't <laughs> need to, to uh, go through all this pain and all those things so yeah. it's in time says now let's yeah. educate the patient yeah I, I i fully agree with you i fully agree with you uh, i come from a generation where pediatric dentistry was not talked about i went to the same dentist as my parents did uh, they put a fear of tooth extraction in me uh, and you know it is as you said the, the world is changing um there's so much information now available and, and we we really hope that you know all this advocacy work that we're doing um, would continue on. So we, we are, we're coming to the end of our webinar and I'm just wondering, um, is there any words of wisdom that you would like to share with our viewers today, especially if they are thinking whether or not to go into the field of dentistry? Uh, Prof. Uma? Okay, um, my words of wisdom would be, uh, first and foremost, um, we have 
one has to be curious one has to be curious to know about why does this occur and how does this basically how and why of things you should be curious because unless you're curious you will not uh, go and read up you will not find information about it and you won't learn anything new and that brings to the next thing we you should be always open to learn new things every day the technology is changing new things are coming in at a very rapid pace so you have to be on top of the things and the most important thing is do not shy from hard work there is no easy way out one has to be prepared to put in as much hard work as possible and then going comes the important thing is whatever you do chalk your path and follow it with your heart you have to have your passion and you have to go with it if you don't have a passion in it then you will do a half hearted thing and then you will always regret hey why did i ever do it so you should have the passion and you should be into it totally and of course be resilient there will be highs there will be lows but life goes on you need to bounce back and things uh, go on so it's okay it's okay for things to go wrong there's nothing wrong in that that is what is life all about and most important thing in dentistry is you need to create a niche for yourself everybody is doing the same you just don't do it things because everybody is doing because that's the in thing that is what the trend is it's not like that you have to how is it that you are different from somebody else because that is what uh, will bring your patients to you so if uh, you're very good at creating beautiful smiles so people uh, people should talk and say hey you want to do some aesthetic work you must uh, you must go to such and such doctor so create uh, you know develop your skills and be confident and most important have faith in yourself believe in yourself and world is open for you there's nothing which can ever stop you from reaching your goals that's all i would say thank you prof uma dr alok any words of wisdom for our future dentists tuning in uh everyone who is aspiring or thinking about becoming a dentist should go for it first thing once you have decided that you want to be a dentist uh get yourself ready for three things as i have already mentioned and you can see on your screens and those three things are hard work hard work and hard work there is no going back on that like prof uma also said and hard work doesn't mean that you have to go to the gym every day hard work means staying put hard it take a lot of efforts to just prepare yourself in the morning at the right time at the same time each day every day and maintain a routine maintain a proper schedule and maintain a, a proper way of presenting yourself and maintaining yourself your integrity as a student second thing uh, uh, which i always tell to every student of mine is keep expectations high your expectations high from you but keep your ego level down don't become egoistic mm. ego kills professionalism whenever you become egoistic uh, that means you are lacking somewhere uh, very dearly and you are trying to cover it up with ego so ego is uh, the exact opposite of a good professional never ever try to let it creep in and uh, third and most important thing is have a very keen eye on details mm-hmm. try to try to observe more and by observation i mean not only seeing things happening around you try to find out why they are happening i am just rephrasing what dr uma has already said that curiosity that curiosity should be there now curiosity can be destructive curiosity as well where you go and destroy something that's why the teachers are there that's why we are there so if you have a curiosity in your mind believe me there are no no stupid questions there are only stupid answers we are always available we are we are available at every platform and i think during the movement control order our students have learned it that the student and the teachers are available online as well yeah. so when when our availability is there then 
why are you not curious you should be curious you you have joined something which is so vast and if you don't come and if you don't come and ask then we take it for granted that either you already know it which is uh, not possible or you are uh, suffering with some some something that is restraining you maybe it's sometimes it's just the, that the person is very shy so don't yeah. feel shy as a student you have all the right to come and ask and we won't take anything uh, uh, against you hold anything against you that okay this student asked this question in the year 3 and that question was very stupid so i will make a note in my diary and i will fry you for that no it's not <laughs> oh, you are no we don't do that at all <laughs> we don't have the time to do that and uh, we don't have the energy to do that we yeah. just try to know that your questions give us an insight in what areas are the bottleneck what are your concerns if you come up with the questions that will guide us to frame a better education to to uh, like prof uma said continuous improvisation is what keeps you afloat and alive yeah we here is strive for continuous improvisation we 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 keep improvising things like anything so if you are on the learning stage i am just a senior student maybe uh, more aged than you double your age but still i need to know what you want to hear what exact thing what exact thing is 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 uh, uh, trying to refrain you from taking some treatment or answering some question or just just people uh, fail as students just because they, they despite being having a curiosity they do not express it yeah they do not ask it so yeah. please those who are prospective students wherever please ask your teachers as many questions as you can and uh, uh, satisfy your curiosity because your curiosity is going to develop a good doctor out of you okay thank you now you you know thank you so much both for sharing your information for our viewers um, you know prof uma and prof aluk is part of our faculty of dentistry um, under the bachelor of dental surgery program at malacca manipal where we have an intake a year happening every october and we take in only a limit of 75 students um you will meet them when you go into semesters 5 until your graduation point which is where our students undergo their clinical training at our on-site clinic and the on-site clinic actually sees um over 30,000 patients a year um you know and if you're still shopping around for a a dentistry program we hope that after today uh, spending an hour with our panelists who are from our faculty you would consider us um, as we are one of malaysia's oldest and most established private medical and dental college as i mentioned we've got over 30000 patients a year coming to our clinic on campus in malacca um, we are located in malacca a nice multicultural city just 90 minutes from KL where everyone welcomes you as one of your own including the patients and you know with professors like um uh, prof uma and prof aluk who are globally experienced to help you um gain a good education during your bds days so that you 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 have a strong stepping stone on your bds to go into the areas of specialization of your choice now prof before we sign off there are two questions Right, and I'd like to pose the first one to Prof. Uma. Uh, Prof. Uma, mm -hmm. one of our viewers would like to know how does one overcome the comments of others about dentistry being inferior to medicine? Yeah, I was looking at the question and I was just thinking. Um, yeah, so yes, of course, if you are a dentist, uh, I mean, I've I've also encountered this when I introduce myself. Hey, I'm a dentist, so. there are two things that happen first is people either they crack dentist jokes or the second thing is they say oh i have a dental problem but then yes there are situations where they say oh dentistry is inferior to medicine but of course not uh, that is a misconception um, because we are while the common term is the dentist but actually we are oral physicians 
right? Yeah. So yeah. Uh, mouth is the the pathway to the rest of the body. And, and there are many conditions which we see in the mouth which actually tell us that there is something else going wrong in the body. So there are so many things which we do. So yes, it's a perception. There are a lot of perceptions which are there. Uh, some perceptions you can break, but there are some perceptions it's very difficult to break. Uh, it's okay. It's, it's all up to you. So th there is no job which is any inferior to anything else. So you need to be, if, if uh, today I'm a dentist, I'm proud of being a dentist and there are so many things I, in fact, educate my medical colleagues, some of my medical colleagues, they bring their children to me and I educate them because they all themselves are not aware. So I think it's wrong to say, but unfortunately that's the perception, but it's, we are working towards it and people are realizing and soon there will be a day when people will not say that and we are at par. So that's about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, for, for our viewer who posed the question, I'm, I'm going to give you a layman's reply um, mm. that if, if, if I had gone into dentistry, which I unfortunately did not have the grades to, I would tell them that how is dentistry any um, inferior to medicine? Uh, the entry criteria for both degrees are the same. The, the duration of study is the same. And to quote the dean, our dean, um, Professor Dr. Abdul Rashid, um, his favorite saying is this, uh, a medical student studies something about everything, but a dental student studies everything about something. And exactly. Yeah, to us, you know, having that kind of superior mastery about a, a from the top of your skull to the, the base of your neck, uh, my God, that, that requires a totally different level of commitment. So um, to our young listener, we, we hope that, you know, we assure you with that. Uh, Dr. Aluk, there is another question that has come in um, from our yeah. viewer by the name of AK. Um, AK, your question, which is on the emergence of new technologies, digital technologies, um, changing the dental landscape, AK, uh, you will actually learn more in depth about all these in our subsequent webinars on dentistry specialization, uh, such as oral implantology and such. But Dr. Alok, would you be able to share, you know, the the kind of equipment, cutting edge equipment that we have uh, at Malacca Manipal, um, where we use to teach our students? Uh, I, I believe we've got this superior scan machine that's the only one in the whole of Malacca, as Dean had told me about, and stuff like that. Yeah, we uh, we do have uh, all these steps, and we are actually in the process of taking further steps and bringing things to the forefront. Uh, you must you must understand that uh, the the college or the institution does equip the. Uh, faculty or the training center with the most modern facilities, keeping in line with the uh, academic course, uh, keeping in line with the uh, uh, with the curriculum. So uh, like in the previous uh, webinar, our Dean Prof. Abdul Rashid has, all, uh, has already said that there is a minimum clinical uh, requirement kind of thing, MCE, but we keep our uh, uh, clinical requirement a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. So you can understand when we are keeping the clinical requirement higher, we are absolutely and certainly catering to it. Yeah. We, we, have, we have the equipment, we have the uh, uh, machines, and we have the personnel to train you into all that. Mm -hmm. And of course, as like, like uh, he only mentioned that we have uh, some short courses also uh, right. in the in the in the department of oral implantology, laser dentistry, and aesthetic dentistry, which we are dealing with. So mm -hmm. we have the equipment and the resources and the personnel who support all those courses. It depends at what level of study you are that you will mm -hmm. be exposed to those instruments. Mm, as, yeah. we, as we see further challenges, I'm pretty sure that uh, the uh, the college will certainly upgrade everything. See, the yeah. technology is evolving by leaps and bounds. Whatever yeah. we have today, 
in the coming three months that material also changes so yeah. sometimes it becomes difficult to immediately procure and provide you but that doesn't mean that we are not doing it we are doing it we give you the information we give you the handling things and we give you we yeah provide you yeah and i think and we also try to procure things and to give you and in that in in that light i am i am i am i am just referring to those things which our dean has already referred mm. implantology lasers and aesthetic dentistry yep. we are taking short courses in them and everything is provided yeah. so those who are interested they can take part they can become our alumnus yeah but more importantly we we ensure that as a student we give them solid technical skills um while technology aids and abets um advances um when you're talking about something like dentistry your 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 skills must be very very firm uh okay. it, to put it in a different context um a lot of teachers in schools they discourage the use of technology for very very young children um like in preschool and things like that because that's when the child has to develop the the hand dexterity to be able to hold a pencil to be able to learn how to write the alphabet and and not at a press of a button and a pops up um and and we apply that same principle to our students during their 5 years with us um they are of course well aware that there there's all these technologies available because we run the short courses but it's not at the right time that they participate in those Okay so AK we hope we answered your question there now ladies and gentlemen thank you so much once again for tuning in uh, a very big thank you to our professors Dr Ashwari Uma and uh, Dr Alok Mishra for joining us and sharing your saturday with us uh, a dentist gets to the root of the problem and we hope that if you're thinking of a career in dentistry you will bear that in mind that you're not just there uh for a short while to to be a a pain reliever you're not a panadol uh but you're there to fix the problem for good if you've not followed us on facebook please do it's triple mc malaysia facebook triple mc malaysia do follow us there so that you are kept in form of our other specialization series coming up within mbbs and bds this is barbara signing off from malacca manipal medical college We thank you once again for joining us. We wish you a good weekend ahead. Take care thank everybody. You. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.